Harris featuring the Wichita State Shockers and your ECU Pirates. Fans, ECU has attended the American Athletic Conference, encourages and promotes good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, racial or ethnic comments, or intimidating actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated and are grounds for removal from the site of the competition. And we thank you for your cooperation. And now, fans, at this time, in memory and respect to those who serve and have served our country, we ask that you please stand to honor America with the singing of our national anthem tonight by Maria Long. The colors are being presented by the ECU Army ROTC. We welcome you on this Tuesday evening to American Basketball as the Pirates of ECU welcome to town the Shockers of Wichita State. Both teams continue to climb up the American standings here as we say farewell to the month of January, moving on into February, just a month removed from March Madness. Hi everyone, Lincoln Rose along with Coach Angela Beck. And sure enough, here are two teams that are really starting to gain steam right as you would hope as a head coach. Well, Heather Macy has her players believing that they can be in the middle of the pack and possibly keep keep going up the brackets and also then you have Keitha Adams and she had a new motto let's go get it well she's got it them getting after it they're best in defense best in rebounding they're on fire Lincoln you say they're on fire they've won six straight how do they make it seven in a row with a win tonight well the key would be that they keep the pressure defense that they always have and then they've got to finish their shots late in the game and of course, for the home side, you can't forget the Pirates have now won two of their last three, looking to delight the fans with a victory on their home court. Well, one reason they've won is they've limited their turnovers. They only had 10 turnovers in the last game. And then they've been penetrating and getting to the line where they've been shooting a crazy 90%. Well, one of the biggest emerging players in conference play for Wichita State has been Diamond Lockhart. Last year averaged under four points a game. This year has really excelled. Well, it's not only her scoring, it's her assisting, it's her leadership, it's her managing, you know, every situation. So she, she had a great game against USF, and that's how they upset them. So watch her to keep leading this team. And for Heather Macy's Pirates, you can't overlook the Brazilian, Thais Oliveira. Well, you sure, sure can't. She's their best rebounder, one of their top leading scorers. She makes it happen for them, and they can depend on her every single night. Pirates welcome the Shockers to town. A big victory. One of these teams will continue to roll through conference play. Wichita State University is Shocker Nation. We exceed expectations, push boundaries, seize opportunities, and move boldly ahead. We are student-centered and innovation-driven. It's who we are. Our vision is simple but powerful. Create, innovate, collaborate, and celebrate. With one unifying purpose, to shock the world. When learning creates leaders, ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. Take a look at our starting lineups this evening, and specifically, LaShonda Monk gets her second career start at ECU. Monk, the freshman out of 
Greensboro from Southwest Guilford, averaging five points this year off of the bench. She will step in. We'll see Ariana Williams, the freshman, presumably with her 10 points ball game coming off of the bench to try to give them some depth. The cross away for Wichita State. We talked about Diamond Lockhart, but you can't overlook, of course, Rangie Bassard. She will be getting double teams throughout the night. Rangie Bassard's used to it. She's leading the league and leading the country in multitude of categories that we'll talk about later on this evening, but she's a player to watch. Bassard averaging almost 19 points. The ball game is on track for the fourth best single season scoring in Wichita State history. Introductions underway as we are here tonight to tell you that the state of the American is strong. Thanks to play of some of the programs like these two. Well, absolutely, and if you think about it, this is the first time Wichita State's been in, in this, you know, state and actually played in this arena, and, you know, every day, every time it's a first for them, so it's a, it's a new experience and it's a challenge for them. It's the first ever meeting between these two programs. Of course, the Shockers joined the American this past off season, but Keitha Adams is familiar with this venue, longtime head coach for UTEP, and in fact, she has not lost against these Pirates. So again, first meeting between these two, and now our first chance to check in with Josh Graham, courtside. Josh? The focus for Wichita State head coach Keitha Adams is to look at transition play, specifically with the guards defensively. As for Reese CU, they know they're at a size disadvantage today, so keep an eye on high post entries. ECU's been working on that at practice, guys. All right, thank you very much, Josh. Has a couple of stories that we'll check in for a little bit later on as he's had a chance to keep tabs on some of their practices, some eventful moments for Wichita State. But here is an ECU team that a couple of wins in the last three games, both required overtime, but impressive wins against Houston and Cincinnati. We saw that Bearcats team just the other day, and they looked as good as just about anybody nearing the top two or three teams. Yes, and they, they forced a bunch of turnovers in that game. So their defense, ECU's defense was on, on tilt. You know, I mean, they were really making some things happen. So if everyone's th thinking Wichita's going to bring the defense, watch for ECU to play pretty physical here today. Shockers in the road black. Looking for the opening advantage is the shot clock down to nine when they'll turn it over without getting a shot off. I might have pulled up and taken that shot right in the seam of that zone. It's one that you really can't get back, but, uh, you know, nice little opening. Pirates the ball with Dominic Claytor. A two-time state champion in North Carolina. ECU with great ties here in North Carolina. First two points come from the Durham native, Salita Green. There's a reason why she's in that starting lineup because she, she likes to pull the trigger. She had uh, seven, seven rebounds in the last game and she can shoot it. She had seven offensive rebounds in the last ball game, Heather Macy pointed out. Well, she didn't get off to a strong start shooting. She was just rebounding her own misses. But how about a quick up-tempo start the most recent two from Alex Frazier? Well, they, they came to play and Heather Macy's gonna have her kids believe in. That's just what she does well. She, even when you've got a team that's winning five in a row, she's gonna say, hey, we got them, we can do it. They're hosting a Wichita State team that started 0-3 in conference. We saw them with that third loss against UCF and all they've done is tear right through conference play. Keitha Adams, longtime head coach in El Paso at UTEPS, returning to her home state of Kansas, grew up nearby in Oxford, about 40 minutes outside of Wichita, and she has embraced a Wichita State team this year that has eight seniors that she wants to send out on a high note. Yeah, she talked about being positive, and that's all she wanted to do was just give them a positive experience if they happen to win, which, I mean, she is a winner, and she's going to play to win, but she wanted to make sure that they had a good senior year. She led UTEP to a couple of NCAA tournaments, a couple of WNITs as well. Two years ago, the coach of the year in Conference USA. I mentioned a six-game winning streak. If they went today, that would be six in a row, and that includes knocking off 23rd-ranked USF last week. A little too much space being afforded there to Kiki Thompson. And Thompson, one of those eight seniors, delivers. 
Yeah, it's an interesting group from a lot of different places. There's one from downtown. Claytor, just her seventh triple this year. This is more offense than we've seen in the first couple minutes than we saw in some game in a whole quarter, so that's good. You're gonna hear some vocal young fans today. Any student with an A on their report card able to get in free as they encourage the kids to come out. And another look, this one off the mark, out of the right hand of Clay Tour. Yeah, the ECU Student Athletic Advisory Committee welcomed about 100 boys and girls club members for some pregame skills clinic. Uh, you probably use a little bit of that yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think a little bit would be uh, generous. You see Heather Macy now in her eighth year. She, this season, became the all-time winningest head coach of this ECU program. Now two decades into her coaching career. Bassard, the quick release off the mark, and ultimately the rebound comes down to ECU's Alex Frazier. About an 18-footer, no. Well, she's had to show a lot of patience, Heather Macy has, with this, this group. She's got a lot of young, young players on the team, and she does, she's just really a great person. She's, she's really patient with her kids, and she gives them time to, to get a rhythm, and she thinks that they're really starting to connect now. Yeah, you talk about a lot of young players. She only has two seniors. Compare that to Wichita State with the eight as three-pointer ultimately off the mark and hauled in by Clay Tour. ECU graduated 12 players over the past two years. So that leads to seven newcomers this year alone. And you never know how long it's going to take to gel, but they are starting to click here at the end of January. Yeah, I think it all equals out because if you look at what Wichita State has had to do, bring in a brand new coach, brand new system, it's it's difficult to to change what you've been doing for a while for a lot of these seniors and and they bought in and that's that's a great thing for for coach Adams to to know that these kids have believe in her. Wichita State a year ago was transitioning from an outgoing head coach to just an interim coach bringing back Linda Hargrove to bridge a gap knowing that they needed the offseason to really put in a proper search for applicants for head coach wind up landing Keitha Adams, someone who had turned away a lot of other offers to leave El Paso, but obviously a chance to return to the Sunflower State proved to be the right fit in her mind. Rangy Passard just bodied her up, took her in the paint, and did a left-hand stab hook. She's got lots of different things to her game. So Wichita State able to overcome an early deficit. The Pirates, though, offensive rebound, Oliveira. Danced around, tipped out, and looking for a transition opportunity here. Lockhart goes right around a pair of Pirates, can't get it to fall. Uh, the second bite of the apple coming up thanks to the offensive rebound from Lozada Cabbage. Well, there you see the speed from Lockhart and then the tenacity of Cabbage. Cabbage is a fighter. I mean, she wasn't even getting on that ground, but she just grabbed that ball. Look at, look at Lockhart just go in there. She went around him, just missed the shot. Then Cabbage fought for the rebound and took it away. So Wichita State will hang on to the ball here. Right now, shooting four of seven. Waiting for her shot in the wing. And again, you see the first player to step in off the bench, Angie Tompkins, to help get things going again. That was a nice fadeaway shot right there. Nothing but the rim. Monk, the freshman, back up top. She'll be directed by Justice G. A long two and ultimately too strong off the back iron. Rebound by Tompkins, the Orlando native. So we saw Wichita State 
again in that loss at UCF, 59-53, their third straight. They had yet to ever win a game as a member of the American Conference play. We turn our heads for a moment. They pick up wins against Memphis, Tulane. We see them in Dallas against SMU, or rather in Wichita against SMU. And they turn right back around, carry that momentum to knock off a top 25 team in USF for just the third time in the program's history. But things really for both of these teams starting to gel here at the end of January. Midway through the opening quarter. First ever meeting between the Shockers and Pirates, which on state up by four on the road. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. the chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Bohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. Take a look into the huddle of Heather Macy's Pirates. They go off to a quick start, but Wichita State able to capture their first advantage still hanging on. We take a look at the standings and well, take a look. It is a three-way tie for fourth right now with Houston, Cincinnati, Wichita State, ECU right there as well among the top seven teams. But Houston, Wichita State, and ECU, these were supposed to be your bottom three teams according to preseason expectations. And with their emergence, it is making it that much more difficult night in, night out on the rest of this conference. Uh, it's such a great league from top to bottom. I think a combination of a lot of things that you're looking at. A, there's some teams that have had some serious injuries and have not been able to overcome the injuries. Why? Because certain people haven't stepped up. And then there's some people that have surprised us, and like the Houston, Houston surprises. Wichita State, we didn't really know what they were capable of doing, but they're proving it every night now. Well, Wichita State is a program that's familiar with 20 win seasons, but it's a rare off year last year. And ultimately, obviously, with the right hire, uh, Keitha Adams with the right attitude, she was not going to impose her will and her style on these players. She was going to adjust her coaching and what she wants out of them based on the personnel she has and it really is coming through well she hasn't been a coach that's been a job hopper she hasn't been hopping around and trying to get a bigger salary i mean she's been somebody that stayed for a long time at utep and she said she's coming home and she's that small town girl when you take that kind of flavor and you put it on a program uh, it mixes some good stuff up mentioned Linda Hargrove came back after being retired for 15 years to bridge the gap the final two months last year. Adams remembers going to Linda Hargrove's camps when she was younger. Well, you didn't have to bring that up because, you know, we used to coach together. <laughs> Linda Hargrove and I, so let's just not bring that one up again. Lincoln Rose and the youthful Angela Beck <laughs> here on the American Digital Network. Josh Graham courtside as well. And Tompkins looking for more points off of the bench here. Well, Wichita State does a good job of catching and shooting. That's just what they do. I mean, she said they went back into the gym and worked on their shooting, and these, these kids can shoot. These young women, if they're open, they're going to they're gonna knock it down. Alicia Faye stripped it away. Back to Tompkins. Her foot was on the end line, a baseline, and it's back over to ECU. You see the shooting early on. Equal attempts, uh, Wichita State twice as good so far. So bringing it up the floor for the Pirates, Alex Frazier, the junior out of Lawrenceville, Georgia, giving them four assists a ball game. They've only missed one start this year. And they just try to force it in, we'll get a kick. Shot clock won't be affected. And 
Shot clock at 19 here for the inbounds play. And now that will reset the shot clock as Thompson called for the foul before the pass. So a full 30 seconds now. Oh, just trying to force the issue. Somehow Oliveira comes up with it, and she's going to go to the free throw line. She had at least three shockers on her, and Thais Oliveira at 6-2 gets to the basketball and will earn a trip to the free throw line. That's just a good matchup between Oliveira uh, inside and, uh, and then uh, Angie Thompson. I mean, they're both 6-2. They're both, but the difference is Wichita's trying to go inside. Oliveira, a 68% free throw shooter. She's been using that size on the defensive end. 35 block shots this season. Let's see if we have a lane violation. So she'll get a mulligan. Played her first two years of college ball at Central Florida College. Now in her second year as a Pirate. Putting up nine points a ball game and able to make good on the second chance at the free throw line. Yeah, she's been to the line more than uh, most of everyone on her team. So she's an aggressive player. She's going to attack the basket. Wichita State's lead down to a pair. No look, kick out. Tompkins for three, no. Now the offensive rebound to Thompson. Nice passing, great move. Tompkins with the finish down the middle. Well, that was an amazing move. Just a little step hop move in the paint and then a little little uh, finger roll. And Tompkins part of this eight member senior class adjusting to a new coach this year. Meanwhile, the open look from Monk adjusting to becoming a starter, just her second start of the year here today. Well, these aren't two defensive teams that are slouches. These are just two offensive teams that know how to hit the open J. It's her sixth three-pointer on the year. Another offensive rebound this time for the Shockers. Tompkins, baseline, good. I mean, you can't let them get their rhythm and just step back and shoot. you got to run them off the line and make them put the dribble down. Monk just went the, on the on the drive right there and drew it on the baseline. The Tom Tom well, there's Tompkins out of the corner. Great rebound there by by Thompson. Tompkins eight points off the bench is your leading score right now for Wichita State. There's the Shonda Monk, 57% free throw shooter off the mark on the first one. Michaela Sanders, the transfer from Liberty for her final year. Had to sit out last year due to NCAA transfer rules. Kiki Thompson. She's right now without the basketball out there on the wing. Keith Adams wants her to be more aggressive. Meanwhile, no problem with Tompkins' confidence. Off the mark this time. They're pretty sure that she didn't want her to shoot that one, though. Opposite end. Ooh. And one. And some inadvertent body surfing. In celebration for LaShonda Monk, she's hit a pair now. Well, she, she hit a pair of 18 points versus Houston, so that it's, it's not like she can't stroke that ball. She was just 5 of 22 from beyond the arc coming into today. Her second three-pointer has the Pirates out ahead by one. Catch and shoot. She's not hurt. She wanted to go to the line to shoot one more. She did. Unfortunately, there was no shocker anywhere close to her. A step back from 16. On the money from Kiki Thompson. Kiki came to play. She's like, Coach, you put me in the starting lineup, but I'm going to show you a few things. Now, if you make your way to the... Uh, T's in the phone book. Tompkins and Thompson have combined for 12 of ECU's 17. 
or pardon me, 12 of Wichita State's 18. And ECU back to a two-point advantage now. Sanders showing a little shooting touch of her own. The start's been quiet. Tompkins has made her presence known. Nice fake, gets in, closer look, won't go. Ultimately holding her ground for ECU with Salita Green. Other way to beat the buzzer, going to come up short. But an eventful opening quarter back and forth. It'll be ECU with a two-point advantage. And let's see if that's the end of the period or if there's still uh, 2.6 seconds remaining. Inside. And now a second left with the foul call. Well, that was a great play called by coach from the sideline. Little lob pass inside. Just had a fight to go get it, and she went and got the, the, the tip. Destiny Campbell, 10 of 18 this year from the free throw line. Here's the play right here. I mean, really, Thompson should have had that. She just didn't grab it. Campbell 6-1, Tompkins 6-2 in that jump ball. Yeah, two mistakes there. One not grabbing it and two fouling her. She'll miss them both. And that will do it for the opening quarter of play. The Pirates' two-point lead intact as they try to hand Wichita State the Shockers' first loss since back on January 6th when they fell to UCF. You're watching American Women's Basketball on this Tuesday evening, exclusively on the American Digital Network. Kentley Shrighton stalls over to first in time double play and that ends the game. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle. A big save. A clutch hit and a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. First ever meeting between Wichita State and ECU. Of course, it'll be the first of many as they now share conferences here in the American. Let's check back in courtside with Josh. ECU and Wichita State are both dead near the bottom of the uh, standings when it comes to three-point shooting. But East Carolina, four threes in that first quarter. We'll see if the Wichita State defense tries to play more perimeter oriented rather than trying to force shooters to shoot it from beyond the arc. Guys. Yeah, right now ECU 3 of 6. So Wichita State 0 for 5 though. As uh, we'll see how that develops throughout the ball game. One rose, Angela Beck, and there you see Keith Adams. While these two teams haven't met, these two coaches very familiar with one another from back in their Conference USA days. Yes, they are, and, uh, you know, they've had some good battles, but I'll tell you what, that's one of the better first quarters I've seen offensively in the American. We've called a lot of games, 46% by ECU and 47% by Wichita State. 
Both of them shooting the ball well, sharing the basketball well, you know, not making a lot of mistakes. It was a very enjoyable quarter. Meanwhile, trying to force the issue. A great defense up front, but Lozada Cabbage just can't strip it away. Oh, going straight to the hole. Again, LaShonda Monk, the freshman, making things happen in her start here today. Yeah, Monk has got, she's got a little step in her giddy up, or giddy up in her step, I don't know how you say it, but she's, uh, she's giddy up and going. Nine points in her first eight minutes so far. And a great dish from Bassard to Lazada Cabbage, cutting to the hole. That's one thing I do enjoy watching about Wichita State is they make cuts down the middle of the lane. They don't just stand around in their zone. And it brings the Shockers back within a pair. Big question for ECU coming into this year, who was going to pick up some of the scoring slack? It's a team where we've seen Ariana Williams give them 10 points a game, Oliveira nine of her own. Williams not in the starting line today, and we do have a turnover on the shot clock violation. I'm not sure why she's not in the starting lineup. I know she's been producing, you know, double digits for, but it's not a bad thing to put a freshman on the bench, let him see something sometimes. So, I mean, just because you're a freshman and had X amount of starts doesn't mean you're going to start every game in your career. And sometimes freshmen don't understand that. It's not a cabbage out on the wing in for a closer look. Oh, tried to repay the favor with a pass to Bassard. Instead, they're going to call her for an offensive foul. And it'll be Rangy Bassard called for the foul. Well, who's on the ground? Monk. Monk's on the ground. Five foot six freshman. She's just going to stay with it. Make it look better than it is. Again, there's the freshman from Greensboro. Heather Macy's really tapped into the talent here in North Carolina. And just trying to force the issue. Ball ultimately stolen by John Lockhart. And Bassard doesn't look that one in, and Oliveira almost able to strip it away. I think it's harder for a freshman like Monk to come in and start than other players like because you're trying to learn the offense. This is, that would have been a good pass, but there, no one had shifted yet. It's a very tough pass to get in the first time through. Shockers have eight assists on 10 field goals so far. Don't come away with either there. Monk with plenty of confidence. And I'll say Oliveira kept a foot planted there, I guess. And Bassard needs to be careful with the elbows and she'll throw it away with the pressure from the Pirates straight away from Monk and was looking for her third just to see a little heat check there for the freshman. Bassard looked a little bit frustrated on that series. I think that ECU's given Wichita a little bit of their own medicine. Back into Ranger Bassard and look at her distribute. Well, that was a great, great pass back, back flip pass from her shoulder. And uh, they just got it. They went to sleep on the weak side. Kiki Thompson with two more. Oliveira matched up with Lazada Cabbage. And this time it'll be Monk called for the foul. So with that turnover, ECU has not scored in the last two and a half minutes. Although Wichita State has only been able to even up during that span. And yeah, that's a little bit too slow for Oliveira. I mean, she has to be able to chin it and, and move it. She, you know, people are going to start digging that out. Diamond Lockhart, the transfer from Texas Tech. Red Oak High School from the Dallas area in Texas. Ranger Bassard, a Texan in her own right. Uh, her 18-footer won't go. Lazada Cabbage, another offensive rebound for Wichita State. Put back won't go, but Lazada Cabbage will now go to the free throw line. The first shocker to shoot free throws here today. Yeah, I would like to see Rangie Bassard put that ball down. She has her at the high post. I, I, I love Liz Cabbage there on the, on the, the weak side boards, but uh, Bassard, Bassard's got a better shot than that. They're going to give her that shot all day. Six offensive rebounds already this half for Wichita State on the road. 
Well, that's what they live and die by. They, they've out, they out-rebounded UCF even in the night that they didn't play well. But they've been out-rebounding everybody since this uh, go-get-it theme that they've got going. Sabrina, the native of Santa Fe, New Mexico, now 20 of 26 this year, 21 of 27 from the free throw line, makes them both. And it's Wichita State back out ahead. Nicole Hope is the newest freshman out there for Heather Macy against seven newcomers this year for ECU. Up ahead, Bassard over the shoulder, never needs a dribble, catches her right in stride. Well, that, that's, that's a nice transition bucket, definitely what Wichita needed at that point. Separation. So here she goes, keeps her head up. Just, you know, not too tough of a pass, just a little bit of a floater there, and she takes it and finishes it. Six points in her 10 minutes on the court so far for Bassard. She has scored 10 or more 20 of the 22 games this year. She has scored 20 or more points nine times this year. And that was a good idea. Just couldn't quite thread the needle looking for hope. Well, they're looking for that back door, but they're not clearing that weak side out. So there, there's a lot of traffic down there on that back door pass. And so it's not really there. And again, Bassard this time misses the bunny. Lozada Cabbage, another opportunity for second chance points comes through. She says, you keep feeding Bassard, and I'm going to keep cleaning up the weak side glass because the place is not going to be. Oliveira try to put her shoulder down. Uh, Lozada Cabbage after this offense on one end comes through with defense on the other. It's a little run that they've got going. The last maybe three or four uh, run, uh, times down the floor, they've scored, and, and ECU's been silent. Inside Bassard. Uh, just had the ball poked away, but Lockhart able to recover it. There's Andre Stovall in the ball game. At the bottom of your screen, Bassard has her shot blocked by Michaela Sanders. And with 5-11 to go here in the second quarter, uh, Wichita State with a six-point lead, but ECU with some nice showing defensively. Good defense. Again, Keitha Adams, 421 victories in her career. These Pirates have missed their last five field goals. Now almost four and a half minutes without a score. And that will continue. Well, credit Wichita's defense shifting a little bit more, trying to pick them up a little bit more man and put a little more pressure on them. Well, Pirates can't always control when their shots fall, but they can control the defensive effort that they put up on the other end. And that has kept it for now, a six-point game. And again, the defense takes the charge. Bassard with her second foul. Well, great coaching. You know, that that look at they got her all upset. And, and what do you want to do? Get Rangy Bassard upset. That's one thing you can control. And so what they do? They just hold their ground. That's the layup, first of all, we, we had. But when they go in for Rangy, they just hold her ground. Monk with nine points to lead the way for ECU, but it's the Shockers out in front midway through the second. Wichita State University is Shocker Nation. We exceed expectations, push boundaries, seize opportunities, and move boldly ahead. We are student-centered and innovation-driven. It's who we are. Our vision is simple but powerful. Create, innovate, collaborate, and celebrate. With one unifying purpose, to shock the world. When learning creates leaders, ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. Wichita State up by six here on the road, trying to win for a sixth straight outing and continue to climb the ladder in the American. Well, already eight offensive rebounds, making things happen, and they are going out there to get it. 
Well, they definitely are. I mean, they've got four players reaching uh, almost the double figure marks with six, six, and eight. Let's check in with Josh on more. Check this out, guys. They have made shirts. Coach Keith Adams with the team motto, go get it. They started that after the January 6th loss to UCF where Keitha Adams challenged her players to represent the university that they're soon going to get a degree from. There's eight seniors on this team. Since then, it's worked pretty well. They've gotten after it with five straight wins, looking for six tonight. Yeah, Josh, they fell by six in that game, bounced back. A couple of wins against Memphis now during this five-game stretch. But, you know, it was actually a victory over USF, number 23 in the country at the time, that made it four straight wins. And that is when the go-get-it Gal made her debut out of nowhere, traveling with Wichita State. Uh, some say the go get it gal may bear some resemblance to Keitha Adams, as uh, coach and the go get it gal have never been seen in the same place at the same time. But <laughs> the go get it gal greeted the players when they uh, made it back from USF in practice. She didn't want there to be a letdown after a big top 25 victory. So sure enough, they go to Memphis. They all get high fives from the go get it gal who then would later disappear and coach would show up a little bit later on. Wow. Uh, but she wanted to make sure they were able to keep up their energy. Didn't have that letdown after a big program it victory. Sounds like a secret society or something. I mean, really. Well, you know, Kansas also had a guy named Clark Kent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think there's some sort of trend over there. Speaking of which, Pirates are able to end a five minute trend when they went 0 for 6 as they get the first two points coming out of the break. We'll credit the coaching there for going right inside and hammering it down low. Uh, two points belong to Destiny Campbell. A, a real balanced attack here by Wichita State. You don't really know who to guard. Anyone can score against anyone. Eight on the shot clock. The players are active. They're cutting. They're moving. And that's going to be and an offensive foul. They're turning it over. And a nice job by the Pirates here coming out of the break. Alex oh, Frazier oh, able to hold her ground. Frazier steps in to help out. Perfect defense by Frazier. Fighting the urge to stay down goes Frazier. <laughs> As Wichita State seeing their lead start to dwindle here. If ECU can continue to cut into it. And they will say a tie up as reaching in there and getting dual possession of the basketball was Andre Stovall. I think Frazier brings uh, a lot more offensive, you know, management to the team at the point guard position versus Monk, but Monk brings more offensive, you know, output. Oh, the pirate press led to the turnover and Clater just could not get the layup to fall. Inside and they get right back. Frazier backing her way in. A little 13 foot leaner from Campbell is good. Yeah, Frazier's just a distributor. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull off her a little bit, but she likes to pass to everybody else, but make everybody else look good. Pirates press now has worked two straight turnovers, and again, Lazada Cabbage coming through, never giving up. That time with the rejection. Yeah, that was Clater, not a good shot. Lazada Cabbage knew exactly where she wanted to redirect that basketball. She'll get the assist as Alicia Fay. The freshman from France comes through. That was a good look looking like Euro uh, hook. It had the loft. I mean, we, we only stab hook in the States. These guys just really take like UL Cinder does. Did. He's the guy from the, the movie Airplane? Yes. So shot clock halfway down. Mm -hmm. And Lazada Cabbage winds up with the ball in her arms. Lob up ahead, a foot race. And free throws coming up. After the foul, we'll send Alicia Faye to the line. That's good defense by Sanders, tracking her down. Frazier got too too deep, didn't have any place to go. Good heads up play. This should have this should have been made and won, but that's what they need to do is just work a little harder to, when they get hit to finish. Faye at six foot two, the easy target for that pass. Limited free throw opportunities this year for Faye. That's just the fourth one she's attempted. She's now officially a 50% free throw shooter in her college career, two for four. 
Wow. See if she can up that to 60%. Uh, lead at five. Wichita State working with an eight player rotation and she's able to add another. They've seen scoring from six of the eight. And Lazada Cabbage was trying to go get it, but involved fouling along the way. Well, with Wichita's defense, if you put it in that corner, they try to keep you in that corner. And they, they, they lock you down right there. Yeah, so corner is not your front. It's not. It's actually your enemy. So that's their, that's their strategy for defense. Got the baseline and the sideline still with eligibility left defending you as well. Inside to Oliveira and Lozada Cabbage wanted to swat. It was so tempting, but commits the foul. That's back to Frazier. That's what she brings to the team. Nice, perfect pass to the post. She doesn't have to put it down. But, but you know, a little foul there on the back. Lozada Cabbage will join Bassard and Tompkins with two fouls apiece. You notice Bassard not on the floor right now. And uh, another free throw for Oliveira. I was really surprised, though, is as many double teams and everything that Bassard has had that she got that upset early in the quarter, or at the end of that first quarter. It's just not, it's unlike what I've seen of her. ECU has gone with an 11 player rotation. No injuries, nothing more than some bumps and bruises this year for the Pirates. It's been one of the things working to their favor. As Heather Macy has the full depth of that bench available to her. Inside, and <laughs> that will be an assist for Lazada Cabbage for all of her efforts. Scouting report, do not try to strip the ball from Lazada Cabbage, because you can't. She will not let you do it. She's going to fight for that ball. And stripped away by Thompson. Looking up ahead for options. Pirates doing a good job getting back. She'll take it herself. Nobody else could get open. And Sabrina Lozada Cabbage pours in two more. I just love what she does for this team. She, her, her pass fakes really draw your attention. She's very strong when she has the ball. And then she can bring it back and nail that little jumper. She's tied with Tompkins for the team high eight points. Sabrina Lozada Cabbage came off the bench five of the first six games this year, but has been a starter ever since. Really made the most of her minutes especially as a shot blocker right on cue. And Sabrina Lozada Cabbage, 12 blocks over the last four games after just 14 over the first 18 ball games. She picked up another rejection to help with the shot clock violation. Sets a screen as well. Cuts through, late dish. And Sabrina unable to save it to a teammate instead. Pirates the other one. Hasn't quite recovered. Final seconds of the opening half. Ambrosio will be called for her second. And this is Raven Johnson, the sophomore from Lowburn, Georgia. A 58% free throw shooter. Headed to the charity strike. Well, this has been one of the tightest locker rooms that Heather Macy has seen. We mentioned the influx of all the newcomers, but everybody, veterans and newcomers, embracing one another. And you know when you have some hiccups in a schedule where games just aren't going your way, how your team responds uh, means everything to you. And it's a Pirates team, as well as you can say Wichita State early on with some adversity, that neither let their heads down. And we have seen the dividends pay off here late January. Yeah, it's great when they like each other and they work hard too, and that's what they're doing. Uh -huh. Banks it through, it's good for three. Kiki Thompson, that's just her second three-pointer all year. That's just not part of her game, but they'll take it. The buzzer beater. Yep, she goes right up and just tosses it beautifully. 
That's about the fifth or sixth we've seen this year. So Thompson's three will help Wichita State here on the road. Checking with Josh, who's with Keith Adams. Coach, your team has 18 points in the paint. You have a dominant edge and rebounding. What did you like from your team in the post? Well, this is a pretty aggressive and intense game out here. We've got to be extremely aggressive and go get rebounds, get loose balls, and we got to play much harder. Thought we had some unforced turnovers. We got to take better care of the basketball. Uh, but we're going to have to play extremely hard and extremely aggressive. Tell me about that last shot. We practiced it every day. We drew it. She ran it just like we draw it up. That's the block of the second half. Lincoln. Tongue firmly planted in cheek. Shockers will take it. An eight point lead, 39 31 on the road. The first ever matchup between these two American programs. We've reached halftime on the American Digital Network. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Hope your Monday is off to a great start. Thanks for tuning in to an all-new episode of The Rise. I'm Haley Outen. Let's take a look at who took home this week's league honors after standout performances on the hardwood this past week. On the men's side, he has been a problem all season long, and especially this week, as Cincinnati's Gary Clark took home this week's top award. Clark became just the fifth player in UC history to record 1,000 career points and rebounds. Clark averaged 17 and a half points and over nine boards a game in wins over Temple and at Memphis. Rookie of the Week honors went to Houston forward Fabian White Jr. The true freshman led his team to a 63-40 win over USF. He recorded his second career double-double, finishing with 16 points and a game-high 11 boards. A handful of other players had impressive performances as well. Here's a look at this week's American Honor Roll. On the women's side, USF forward Maria Jesperson took home this week's accolades. The senior reached double figures in the first half for the third straight game on her way to a game-high 24 points in a win against Temple. Jesperson finished 8 of 11 from the floor, including 2 of 3 from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Freshman of the Week honors went to UConn forward Megan Walker. Walker averaged just under 20 minutes a game in a perfect 2-0 week for the top-ranked Huskies. She averaged just over 11 points and three and a half rebounds per game in wins at Memphis and against Tulane. And here's a look at the performances that received recognition on this week's conference honor roll. Thanks for joining us today on The Rise. Be sure to check back later tonight as we'll bring you an all new episode of Mondays with Mike, where we dive into the top men's basketball headlines across the league. Also, keep an eye out on Wednesday for our new show called American Round Ball, where we welcome in basketball analyst Monica McNutt to talk about what's going on in women's hoops. Have a great week, everybody. Wichita State University is Shocker Nation. We exceed expectations, push boundaries, seize opportunities, and move boldly ahead. We are student-centered and innovation-driven. It's who we are. Our vision is simple but powerful. Create, innovate, collaborate, and celebrate. With one unifying purpose, to shock the world. Wichita State coach Keitha Adams felt like a lack of pursuing the basketball caused the Shockers to fall during close games, so she implemented three words that would become the mantra for the Shocker women's basketball program. Go get it. At Central Florida, I thought we were in a game that we could have won, uh, but we didn't go get it. And there was rebounds that we didn't get, loose balls, and 
I was uh, upset with our team. Uh, plus, I just, you know, that heart. I, I want our heart and soul to be in this thing. And so when we came back from that trip, uh, just had an honest conversation with our team about it. And uh, we've respond, they've responded. And, and it's just really important that we um, put our heart and soul in it. And we got to want it more than the other team. And, you know, we shoot it, we got to go get it. When the ball's coming off, we got to go get it. Loose balls, we got to go get it. That's who we have to be in order to have success. And I think, you know, every team's got to find out what they have to do in order to have success. And us going and getting it's what we got to do. So what does go get it mean? Going to get it just means going to have fun, going to dive on the floor, going to get extra possessions on the boards, going to get it extra shots in the gym. You know, we just want to make sure that if we're going to go get it, that we do it the right way. And so far, that the go get it mentality has helped us, has got us in this four-game winning streak, and I know that it will continue to help us, but we also still have to clean up a lot of things and continue to have that mentality to go get it. Uh, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the clock reads, we have to always be ready to go get it. After that conversation, the players knew that something had to change. When she came back and had that honest conversation with us, we knew something had to change if we wanted to be successful. So, I mean, we, you know, took her lead and just followed her energy and her excitement, and we just went out there and played from our hearts and for her. And how has three simple words changed the Wichita State women's basketball program? Well, let's just say the practice when she implemented it, we ran, and we ran, and we ran, and we ran. And the reason why we ran was because she didn't feel like we wanted it enough. And I have to agree with her. In the first three games that we lost three times in a row, we didn't make her feel like we wanted it. We were right there in all three games, and we didn't want it bad enough. And so Coach got us into practice, and she made us feel it. She made us feel it. And to have that feeling of wanting to go get it now, to go play for each other, to dive on the floor for one another. So we're very excited. We're very humble. We know that we still have a lot of growing to do. We do have the number one team in the country to play and to face. But our mentality will not change. It will remain to go get it. The Shockers have not lost a game since the Go Get It slogan was put into place. And with eight seniors on the roster, Wichita State looks to go get a spot in the upper half of the American Athletic Conference standings. For Campus Connect, from Wichita State, I'm Grant Cohen. When learning creates leaders, ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. You know what, I like their eagerness. I think we've got a crew that really wants to be very, very good basketball players and then are willing to invest in the process to do that. We came out better than we started. We are very young this year, but we have a very high side of what we can do. Last year we didn't do as well as we wanted to, so definitely finishing in the, within the top of our conference will be a measure of success, but also our growth personally as well as athletes. The main goal for me is just to give my teammates positive energy and really just buy into the program. And just Well, I'm already in it, but allow everyone else to buy in so we can be as wholesome as possible. Well, right now I think that we're a team that will sit down and guard you in the half court. Um, defensively, we're going to hang our hats. Every single night we're going to be a tough out. We're going to defend it and we're going to rebound it. The fact that we are able to learn and able to adapt quickly, I feel like when you're able to adapt, that's when in the environment you're able to succeed. And we don't make any excuses for ourselves. We know we have to go out and go do it. I've learned more about the mental aspect of the game. Like she'll always, she like she feeds into her players constantly, nonstop. And it's like when she feeds into you, she feeds you this knowledge all the time and it just really it helps you grow. Don't miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets at the American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. All the excitement of tournament basketball starts March 8th and runs to the 11th at the Amway Center. 
in Orlando. For tickets, call the Amway Center box office or visit theamerican.org for more information. Potentially Shrighton Thaw's over to first in time double play and that ends the game. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle. A big save. A clutch hit and a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. Miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. That's nine. Yep. Halftime here on the American Digital Network. Wichita State with an eight-point lead here on the road. We mentioned time and time again, first ever meeting between these two. It's going to be a great rivalry. You imagine moving forward. Lincoln Rose along with Angela Beck with you. As any surprises in that first half? Well, I thought it was a great game. I thought offensively both teams shot the ball a lot better than I anticipated. What? Let's check in with Josh. Coach. Coach, really quickly, look at it the second half. What was your message to your team? You know, I think we got to do a much better job on the glass. Didn't de didn't defend as, as executed in the game plan, and need to pick it up and finish this thing strong. Really quickly, how do you limit their size? Well, I don't know that you limit size, but we can uh, increase our toughness around the basket. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that toughness was one of the things we talked about with us on the chat yesterday, knowing that any team led by going to be a challenge in that sense. But some of your star players for Wichita State, Thompson as well as Tompkins, and of course Monk for ECU got the start, just her second career start coming through. Bassard we saw only for 11 minutes because of two personal fouls, but she made the most of that time. She did, she got frustrated, but I'll tell you what, ECU needs to pay attention in these first five minutes because even though it's only an eight-point separation, Wichita is a very efficient offensive team. They have a very strong defense. They don't let up a lot of leads, and they're on fire right now with five in a row. So if I'm ECU, I'm preaching, let's get it going, and let's really have, get some quality shots and, and, and amp up our defense. You see those numbers. Of course, the only made three-pointer they had was Thompson at the buzzer to end that opening half that took a five point advantage up to eight for these Shockers, giving them a little extra cushion now, moving on into the third quarter. Well, the first quarter we both had equal field goal percentages, and then in the second quarter, not so much. But everything else, besides the offensive rebounding prowess of Wichita State, ECU needs to keep them off the glass, make them one and done. A reminder what's still to come here on the American Digital Network within the confines of women's basketball. We'll stick with these Shockers. They head back home this weekend. It'll be Houston and 
Well, something's got to give when those two teams collide, as again, these are some of the upset-minded teams that have started to catch fire this month and turn some heads. Memphis then will go to Houston. We'll see the Tigers in action over there on the campus of Texas Southern this year as Houston's Hoffines uh, Arena, old Hoffines Arena, is under renovation. UCF, Temple, SMU, Cincinnati, Tulsa among the teams we'll see before we get a little bit past Valentine's Day. Lincoln, I think the second half is going to, we're going to tell who, who's really for real because you can win a couple games, maybe even on accident, catch a team by surprise, but you can't do it the entire season. So the cream's going to rise to the top and we're, and we're going to we'll shuffle this mess up. Well, and of course, teams will start seeing some of these other teams for a second time. Wichita State coming off a of victory at Memphis has now already played both of their games against the Tigers. A couple of wins now. Part of this five-game winning streak for the Shockers. And they'll get a walk. Ball back over to Wichita State here early on. Wichita State outscoring ECU 21-11 to in that second quarter. And Heather Macy's team, though, still within eight, despite the cold second frame. Yeah, they just need a few more players to step up offensively and, and really try to attack their man. Trying to force it into Bassard again. She only played 11 minutes in that first half, but uh, Ranji Bassard trying to make the most of it with six points, four rebounds, three assists. She's out there to start the third quarter. Well, I think she's always talked about, Coach has, that they're not a one-man show, and they, they aren't. They have several players that can step up. And Shockers still have not made a three-pointer other than the halftime buzzer beater. Bassard will go to the free throw line, looking for points seven and eight now on the evening. Well, if you can't get your points the other way, go to the offensive glass, and that's what she did right there. And the first one good for the 80% free throw shooter. See if uh, East, East Carolina can exchange the favor here and then maybe put on a press because that was highly effective in the first half. Driving around the double team, could not get it to go again. LaShonda Monk getting her second start of the year. Monk with a nice showing in the first half with nine points to help lead the way for ECU. There was no rotation at all on that, so I'm, I think she might have been shocked she was so wide open. Mishandled by Thompson, able to hang on to possession. Lazada Cabbage, that one wanted to go down, but ultimately will not fall. She's pretty effortless, very unorthodox type player, effortless in her delivery. The stands there and it's just gone. I mean, it's, it's her, her release is very quick. And it'll still stay on this end. Wichita State with a double digit advantage. Largest lead either team has enjoyed here today. I was thinking their weight room has got to be pretty good with Bassard and Cabbage. <laughs> I mean, I bet you they both press quite a bit. <laughs> Some big numbers being thrown up. Yes. Sard running without the ball, and they never need to dial her up. Taking it the entire way was Cesaria Ambrosio, the junior from Switzerland. It's when you start to pay attention to someone else, people like that hurt you. Ambrosio is coming off a career-high 19 points the other day against Memphis. Great second effort, and now it'll lead to a third effort from the free throw line for Salida Green. You can see, though, ECU's getting a little frustrated, kind of just, you know, taking it one on three there, um, not running their offense as efficiently as they did when at the beginning of the first half. 
Green played her first two years of college ball up in the Commonwealth of Virginia as a Richmond Spider. Sat last year as a transfer. We'll have one more year of eligibility after this. And has one more free throw to come. Tompkins back on, and her presence was immediately felt when she came off the bench in the first quarter. So we talk about these first five minutes. Um, they really need, it's a 10-point game. They've got to make something happen defensively here. This press a couple of times gave Wichita State some fits. This time they beat it. Whipped in to Bassard, and there's Tompkins distributing. That was a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press, and, and in the 1-2-1-1, one, 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 the, the middle guy didn't move, and somebody was wide open. And now a foot race the other way. Transition opportunity, points off the turnover. The layup out of the right hand of Kiki Thompson. Her first two points since that buzzer beating three pointer to end the opening half. Heather Macy wants a timeout. It's a 14 point lead for Wichita State here early in the third quarter. Shockers, Pirates continue, and we return here on the American Digital Network. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit, and a game winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. Miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. It's an 8-2 start here in the third quarter for Wichita State, expanding their advantage now to a 14-point lead in this matchup on a Tuesday evening in the American. Well, a reminding, reminder, our next champions to be crowned in the American, swimming and diving back in Dallas. SMU will host that for the four-day span that begins on Valentine's Day. All of this coverage will be on the American Digital Network, beginning with swimming and diving. You'll have indoor track and field over in Birmingham, golf, tennis, softball, outdoor track and field, women's rowing, and it'll all wrap up over in Florida with baseball this upcoming May. But Man, once you hit the start of the spring sports, uh, constant championships, this conference always does a great job with uh, their various venues that uh, champions will be crowned. And there's some of the Boys and Girls Club members that Angela was reminding us about at the top of the broadcast. Boys and Girls members, uh, after their pregame skills, they got a little dance skill too. Sure. Uh, well, you were instructing them, correct? Uh, I do have a few dance moves, but uh, they're very private. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, back to stats. Let's talk about stats. 56% for Wichita State, only 35% for ECU. And uh, the boards have been controlled and points in the paint. So I really think that Oliveira's need, he, she needs to step up. They, they need to find her. She's got to come alive because she's a big part of what they do. It can't just be a guard-oriented offense. And uh, also Clater, she needs she needs to make something happen here, and they need to defend better in the paint. Well, where Oliveira has been a factor, she's just one of five from the floor, but has four of her six points from the free throw line. Again, she's making things happen there in the paint with her size. And let's see what ECU has in mind here after calling that last time out. Oliveira, will jump stop from 14, won't go, and Bassard has the rebound. I like the aggression, though. I mean, at least she was going after it. Wichita State's made three of their last three shots, and that's their first miss in a little while, coming from Tompkins. On the opposite end, trying to go off the glass, won't fall for Campbell. Again, Shockers up by 14. Biggest discrepancy we've had in this ballgame. 
I like ECU pushing tempo and trying to get one and get another rebound and really try, trying to make something happen here. Feed. Nice job leading Bassard to the basket, and now she'll be led to the free throw line. Destiny Campbell commits the foul. Well, Wichita has that all night because there's no weak side help here. Absolutely none. She's just kind of skipping into the lane, and she's got to dive into that lane when that ball comes in and get a quick double. So Bassard already in double figures, 10 points in 14 minutes on the floor tonight. Seven rebounds, three assists as well for Ranji. And one more for the former Minnesota Golden Gopher. Well, for Coach Adams to come in and take these shockers and make them think they can go on the road and win, that, that alone says something, and they think they can win. And Tompkins holding her ground. ECDU doesn't get as much ball reverse as they need. Oh, staying honest right on her hand in the face from Thompson, but not enough to affect the shot. Good shot by Frazier, but just, just not a very good offensive set. And the Shockers can't go down and get those two points back. So Frazier's most recent score has them back within 14. A little hesitation, three, no. And Tompkins will tap it to herself. They look over to the bench, Keith Adams. Well, this is where Keith is at her best. She has her kids executing, not throwing up crazy shots and quick shots. They'll break it down to probably 12, 12, 10 seconds before they shoot it or throw it away. Seven on the shot clock. When that one goes out of bounds, it'll stay on this end. LaShonda Monk and Michaela Sanders will return to the ball game for the Pirates and head coach Heather Macy. Monk got the start today. Her second of her career has nine points to show for it in 12 minutes, along with a couple of assists. She was sitting out for a breather with three personal fouls. She is the only Pirate with three fouls. Lazada Cabbage for Wichita State is on the bench right now with three as well. Again, into Bassard. They'll take that matchup. That ultimately won't go. ECU needs to send three to four players to the boards right now, every offensive possession, so they can get an offensive rebound. Look at they won't. They're all standing there watching it. If she misses, they, they don't have another shot. Fraser manages to get past two defenders. And it's back within 12 now, as Wichita State scoreless for almost three minutes without a field goal. Inside to Tompkins, no. And ball will wind up in the arms of Green. That was good help. Whipped inside. All right. And the Pirates are back within 10. And Salida Green now a big part of this comeback effort. And a timeout, Wichita State. Nice response by those Pirates when their head coach called the previous timeout. Trailed by as many as 16. Well, of course, uh, we talk about the bright future here in the American, and that includes up there in Storrs, Connecticut, Megan Walker. Uh, what a week she had, those victories for the Huskies over both Memphis as well as Tulane to keep them unblemished, averaging a little over 11 points a ball game during the stretch. And your player of the week in the American, well, top 25 program still, USF as Jesperson. That 16-point victory over Temple. Of course, USF did fall uh, this past week to Wichita State. That might have been the best fall they've had, though. Uh, really, if your team like that loses at this point in the season, you really do gain their attention. And they needed to kind of step it up just a little bit more. It's not good enough just to make it into the NCAAs. You want the right seedings. And I think you'll see them pay attention here. Z Saunders over in Orlando, Hawkins in Houston. Uh, 
Temple Owls, Tulane Green Wave, Wichita State, uh, Shockers with Ambrosio, all represented on the American Athletic Conference's honor roll for women's basketball, and no surprise to see those names popping up as we've enjoyed having a chance to check in on them throughout the year. We'll see Hawkins uh, again coming up this weekend as the Shockers will meet the Cougars. Pirates, fun atmosphere, hoping that ECU can get back in this one, already shaving the deficit down to 10. And some of the other Shocker students Looks like welcoming they the Boys food. and Girls Club. Good food, though, don't you think? I mean, look at this. Everybody's got something to chow on. I, I'm jealous. We, we, we have to just drink our coffee and our tea, right? <laughs> but that was a great response, like you said, on the timeout. Uh, I felt like ECU played a different three, four minutes there than I've seen, you know, since the first quarter. And Wichita's just kind of hanging out. So I think uh, we'll see who lights who's, who lights whatever team up. And Wichita needs to pay, still pay attention because ECU's at home and they can come back. So again, Wichita State still hanging on to a 10 point lead. The Shockers called that last time out. Keith Adams did not want until to wait until the lead had dwindled to single digits. And a reminder of Full slate of women's basketball this year on the ADN broadcast package. Uh, we mentioned Houston and Wichita State, our next destination. That one over in Kansas. Uh, our first broadcast in the month of February. We'll make trips to Houston, Philadelphia, as well as Tampa and Cincinnati uh, over the next month. So again, all this coming out of the timeout from Wichita State. Uh, the Shockers still shooting 50% on the road. ECU shooting 38%. Into Bassard. And that is what Keith Adams and any head coach wants to see coming out of a timeout to get your players' attention. Well, perfect execution, perfect play calling, ball reversal, back up top, inside to, to Rangy Bassard, and, and then the finish. So... She settled them down and said, hey, we need, to, we need to get better shots, and we're going inside. Again, just an eight-player rotation so far for Wichita State. And for a lot of coaches, that's a good thing. Other coaches, it's just out of necessity. You only have eight you can rely on. But I mean, I think you can win with eight. It's, I mean, eight's a lot enough. Uh, seven's tough. Nine and ten sometimes, it's, it's hard to keep them happy, really. But unless you're at UConn. Pirates trying to keep the fans happy. As another two from Sanders, the senior. She, she's just kind of a silent killer. I mean, she does a lot of nice things for them that go unnoticed, and that was a great shot. Again, she was playing college ball in Lynchburg at Liberty University for the Flames her first three years. Sat out last year. And one of just two seniors for the Pirates these days. And Sanders... Again, has been a nice asset off of the bench as we see heading back to the bench, Destiny Campbell. Tompkins had a power step and left her feet before she knew exactly what she wanted to do, but fortunately that ball touched last by Sanders. It'll stay with the Shockers. That was a good looking out of bounds play until that happened. And now the turnover. Pirates have numbers the other way. And trying to go for the block, Thompson almost came up with it. Instead, the foul. That, that, that looked close. I don't know. That, that, I'd like to see a replay on that one. But bottom line is she gave the ball up too early. You got to get into the defender before you dish to score. And the defender was able to play both of them and, and cause havoc. I mean, they, they, the officials bailed them out there. Lita Green has now made all three of her free throws today. You get another look. Thompson will try to go up for the swat. And oh, may have gotten the elbow. Just like I thought I should be an official. No, that was all, <laughs> that was all ball. <laughs> I'm sure they'd love to have you. Does she have an elbow out there? I really didn't see that, but okay. Still 15 to shoot. The 
Bassard from the elbow. 16 points now for Ranji Bassard. 16 points in just 18 minutes today. Well, they've dialed her up here lately. I don't know if you've noticed, but they've been dialing her number almost every time down the floor. She's been touching it. It still seems like a quiet outing for her. It is, but... And yet she's approaching her season average of almost 19 points. Tompkins okay. with the board. This is how they win games. They go to their go-to player down the stretch. And she's touching it. Watch it. But then I like that they cut their guards behind. And, and when she gets a one-on-one -on -one isolation, she's still got other people rebounding. Tompkins, Bessard, bucket. It's called cutting. You know, coach doesn't have them standing around. They're cutting. 18 points, seven rebounds, three assists. A productive outing so far in her first trip here to Greenville. I'm probably switch up my defense if I'm Carolina. Tompkins may have gotten a piece of that. Second chance won't go for Green. And Heather Macy is your sixth fighter on the court right now. Yeah, she's a fighter. I mean, I know she wishes she had eligibility. Same they know play. where to go. That time the rim gets in the way, and Bizarre fighting back a grin is going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, but let's go over to see that. They, they found a weakness here in East Carolina's defense, and it's that slashing weak side player coming right down the lane. And it happens to be their best player, Rangy. Rangy is 4 of 5 from the free throw line today. Shockers now 9 of their 10 free throws made. Well, Heather Macy, uh, we talked about how impressed she is with the dynamic in the locker room for this group, but she also quickly learned this was a team she could push hard and they would respond in a positive manner. Yeah, I think she wants to, to teach them the fundamentals and teach them how far, you know, be tough on them early in their career. And, and they are younger. They're more inexperienced than Wichita State. But, but still, I don't care about age when you get to this point. Yeah, Shockers, I don't know if you'll argue they forced that turnover or not. As Pirates give it back to them, Shockers up by 14. Still stayed in that zone. Wichita State, winners of their last five. And off the mark of that one. Can ECU start to put something together at the start of the fourth quarter? This will help. Monk gets the bucket and a free throw coming up. Her yeah. first two points of the second half. Well, Monk likes this. This is her favorite shot. Except she uses that right hand. She doesn't quite have that left hand yet in her repertoire. Uh, not traditionally a good free throw shooter but maybe tonight she will be but I think this is going to be a really great player for the American she's going to see a lot of double digit nights in her future yeah 57 percent from the free throw line a three-point play this time all these minutes she's getting right now are precious ECU's had some success with this press back in the first half Shockers, Diamond Lockhart. We emphasized her at the start of the game. She was coming off a 17 point, seven rebounds, six assists performance at Memphis the other night. And the lead back to 13. That was just so efficient. I mean, that's what they are. That's why I, I tell you, if, if you let them have too big of a lead, they're tough to beat. Well, credit for the Shockers, Alicia Fay, the freshman, kept that hand in the face the entire time. Ball will stay with the Pirates here. With a fresh shot clock. And about 5.9 seconds separates the two blocks. Oliveira just never got turned around to face the bucket. Wichita State can just about hold for the final shot. They did exactly that at the end of the second quarter. See what else Keith Adams has drawn up. Here's your hero with the buzzer beater. This one won't go with seven seconds left on the shot clock. 
And Pirates now with a chance to cut into a 13-point deficit. And they will. And it's Monk who comes through. 14 points for Monk. She's trying to pull the Pirates back into this one. Trying to make them winners of three of their last four outings. Let's get the fans home happy here in Greenville. When we come back, fourth quarter here in the American. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Potentially Shrek and Stalls over to first in time double play and that ends the game. Oh, Wichita State able to grow its lead by three during that third quarter. Gives the Shockers an 11 point lead heading here into the fourth and gives us a chance to check back in with Josh Graham. Halfway through the third quarter, ECU was down 14 and Heather Macy said to her team that you've got to play with pride and she wasn't happy with the body language on the floor. Since then, they've scored 10 points in the final five minutes of the third quarter. As for Wichita State, the big thing is offensive rebounds. They know they have size. They got 10 offensive boards. That has led to 16 second chance points. We'll see if that continues as we enter the fourth quarter. Lincoln. One of these two teams is going to be rewarded tonight with a victory and just continue to build on what has been a great stretch for the past couple of weeks. And a lot of the things that have been going well for these teams, especially for the Shockers, is ball movement. Well, they have great ball movement. They run the floor well. They share the basketball. They reverse the ball from side to side. They're able to break a press without, you know, stretching it out and, you know, freaking out. They can take it down the floor. 17 assists for the Shockers on their 24 field goals. ECU has not been too shabby. 12 assists on their 17 makes. And all well, right on cue. Pirates now have cut it down to a nine-point deficit at the start of the fourth. I mean, that was that's all day. Green just commanded that post and took them down. They need to do more of that. A little stop and pump. Won't go. And a loose ball will come up in the arms of Ariana Williams, who's been fairly quiet today. Despite averaging 10 points a ball game, here's a freshman. And, well, anything but quiet, LaShonda Monk has not taken that oath of silence. Well, Monk is a score or or er I mean, that's all that kid thinks about, and that's her side of the hook. The, I don't know why she likes that side so much, because she's right-handed, but she likes that side. Monk looking for another three-point play now. Wichita State needs to watch out now. They got a little momentum coming. They need to execute, get some stops, because these guys are coming down. And she's starting to hit her free throws. 17 points for Monk. That is the team high. Bassard for Wichita State with 19 has the game high. That's a perfectly executed quarter-court high-low game. Cabbage finishing. 
Oh, trying to force it inside to Oliveira. Too many black shirts in the area. Desard with the steal. Well, that's another thing that Cabbage does. She, she plays with reckless abandon. Dives on the floor, makes a steal. Just when they're starting to come back. Shocker's lead has been cut in half. Bessard, offensive foul, and that will be her third. Uh, that was a good acting job. I mean, nothing against East Carolina on that. Good for them, but the official underneath didn't call it. The guy on the side called it. She she didn't she didn't lower her shoulder. Uh, but good for good for East Carolina for acting. She can expect a check from SAG. She should go. For the residuals in, uh, oh, about 60 days. <laughs> Monk picked up her dribble. Inside, nifty spin and free throws coming up. The reward for Green. I would have loved it if, if Kiki Thompson would have taken a charge right there. That would have been just, she could have had it right there. Boom, just take it. Just fall down. Yeah. But that was a good move. Good spin move. Green making two thirds of her free throws this year. Look good. Green's looking good. She does a lot of things too that go unnoticed. She's a rebound shy now of a double double. That was her 10th point, second leading scorer for ECU today. So today you have Monk who averages five points, Green who averages a little under seven as your top two scorers. That's kind of what I was wondering with East Carolina. You just never know which team's going to come out, which individual's going to come out. I, st I still think they're trying to find things out, but they're winning a few games as they're doing it. You know, your leading scorer this year came off the bench, Bassard. She's one of three shockers in double figures, unable to add to her 19 there. I know she's a good shooter. I just don't like that shot. Open look on the wing, a sweet stroke from Alex Frazier. I like that shot. She's a 40% shooter from the floor. And she has ECU back within five. Look at Coach high-fiving them when they're going back on the court. She's working hard. ECU has scored eight of the ten points here in the fourth so far. They've done a lot of the heavy lifting at the start of this fourth quarter to make this uh, two possession ball game. Yeah, Wichita State looks a little bit different than what I've seen and they're a little cautious and kind of acting nervous. Not acting fluid like they normally are. And the Pirates snap this five game winning streak for the Shockers. Lazada Cabbage will add two. That's a tough shot and, and all the heat was on them so that was a big basket for them. She's a rebound shy of a double-double with her 12 points now. Back and forth. It's been a career night for LaShonda Monk. And just her second career start. I have a feeling there will be more starts in her future. Yeah, I like her and Frazier in that backcourt. They, they play well together. Five-point ball game, almost seven minutes still to go. Cabbage getting her own rebound. Bassard trying to suck the defender in on her right hip to create room along the baseline. A rebound out to Frazier. Two on one. Frazier will take it herself for the easy two. Uh, that was a smooth... Smooth drive. Closest she, this game has been since the first half. Yeah, she wasn't going to give that up. She wasn't even thinking about it. She was taking it all the way. I like that because there's less mistakes. Wichita's maybe doing too good of a job of just holding the ball. They're denying Bassard, but Oliveira's going to be calling for a foul. A little too aggressive. Trying to shut down number 35. This is where you have a fine line. Are you playing to win or are you playing not to lose? And it's so hard. I'm not saying that Wichita State's, you know, talked to the team about slowing it down. I'm sure she has a little bit, but now you got to still play to win. You still got to be aggressive. You got to get to the line, and, and it, we'll see what they do here. 
Pirates, winners two of their last three games. Both those wins came in overtime. Bessard, without the ball, would like to drift into the lane. She'll set a screen. And they'll oh. never get a shot off. Monk again. And the freshman denied by Bessard. It'll stay on this end with ECU. Monk thought she was found. And the freshman's got something to say. Like, didn't you see the same play I saw? That was a good take. She just... Here she goes, and she just comes and doubles, leaves her man, doubles it. The go get it gal may have visited Greenville as well. <laughs> That's a pretty clean block. So a three point ball game. It'll be the Pirates basketball when we come back to Greenville. 524 to play here on ADN. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. Wichita State will be on defense when they come out of this timeout. ECU with a chance to tie this ball game up, erasing a 16-point deficit. Let's check in with Josh. With all the youthful players that Heather Macy has on her roster, she's had to really rely on them in late game situations. Nicole Hope had a driving layup to beat Houston about a week and a half ago. Alex Frazier had the bucket at the end of regulation to force overtime in a near win over Cincinnati. They won that game in overtime. Now it's LaShonda Monk who has 19 points and we'll see if her younger players continue to make great decisions down the stretch. Yeah, Monk has been phenomenal, one of the seven newcomers this year, and they are taking turns stepping up. We mentioned she was inserted in the starting lineup for just the second time this year. Heather Macy must have seen something in warm-ups. Well, I don't think it's it's too hard to see it. Uh, she, she's a great talent. She has great athletic ability, and she can score. She's a scorer. On the other hand, I, I think that basically Wichita needs to do the high-low game between Cabbage and Bassard, and they, they just need to – milk that every time down because they can score in that high-low game and they're really not taking time to do that. So it will be ECU's ball underneath the basket after the last timeout. Meanwhile, Wichita State has been scoreless for the last two minutes, eight seconds. See Keith Adams and her associate head coach, Ava Lukowska. Ava was with her at UTEP and over at Independence Junior College. Well, they went to Monk. Her shot was off the mark. The rebound by Oliveira and a jump ball will send it back the other way with the possession arrow. Good looking play. Uh, Monk just didn't really have it in her hands and, it, and she just tossed it up there. Monk has 19. Frazier and Green also in double figures for ECU with 10 apiece. Bassard with 19 for Wichita State. 12 for Lazada Cabbage. Thompson off the bench today with 11. Guess who? Back the other way. Oh, a whole lot of fun back and forth those last few passes. Yeah, that was a lot of uh, indecision on everybody's part. Ambrosio, she really didn't want to be dribbling it up there, but then she, she had a great defensive effort getting it back. They call Green the defensive stopper for this group. She gets a hand on that one. Tapping it into the Wichita State bench. Midway through the fourth. 
Keitha Adams has seen her Shockers now climb towards the top of the pack in the American in her first year, as well as Wichita State's maiden voyage in the American. So the back side of this is going to be wide open, but you've got to move it side to side and get it on the baseline weak side. It's a 3-2 defense. And gives it right back over to Frazier. And they're going to call a tie-up. This will be back over to the Pirates. It's better than a travel, right? I've seen a lot of guts out of Frazier, too, here down, down the stretch. She's got, she's got her eyes wide open. She's not necessarily the main scorer, but she's the distributor. She's keeping these guys on task. She's got 10 points, five assists, three rebounds in her half hour of play. As Wichita State's defense will just set up in the front court. Wide open look. That one from Tennessee's side of the border. Oh, impressive. Great shot. She was calm, cool, and collective. Just drilled it. As Sanders came through, attempted over 73 pointers this year, not shy. They're pressuring the guards so much they can't find the bigs. Shockers still only have that one three-pointer that they made for the buzzer beater in the first half, and that is the reason why they get to trail here in the second half. But we're taunt. Michaela Sanders. And that gives her eight points now in 12 minutes off the bench into Tompkins. But they have turned it over several times against ECU's out-of-bounds defense. Pirates can take a lead for the first time since the first half. They led after the first quarter, 20 to 18. Before the Shockers slipped into gear in the second period. Oh, nice feed to Oliveira, and the Pirates have the lead. Unbelievable comeback here. Unbelievable. This when you think that the Pirates are starting to fall apart, they they ignite, and Heather Macy has just been on them the whole game, prodding them to do their best and execute. You see the run. It's a 17 to 4 start for the Pirates here in the fourth quarter. And Wichita State has now been unable to find any scoring for over four minutes. They'll pull up from Monk. She's headed back to the free throw line. That is a freshman late in a game knowing how to take things over. That was, that was a great take by her. And she, oh, she's just taking her time, making sure she's all right. Did she, did she, did she hit her head? Yeah, she looked a little dizzy popping up. I'll take time to mop that in up the floor. And it, she may not be able to shoot the free throws as they're going to insert Ariana Williams, the freshman who has started a little over half of this season. Watch number two. And it's not that any shocker hit her. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't see anything hit on her head, but she might have a headache. I mean, you know, as much as she's been causing damage, she's been giving other people Shooting headaches, but... Uh, Hopefully she's okay. Uh, interesting part is that Cabbage hasn't been in the game. They've been going with Angie Tompkins. And the high-low game isn't quite as effective with Tomp Tompkins in there. And I'm not sure why Cabbage isn't on the floor here down the stretch. So in her stead, Williams comes through. It's a two-possession lead for the Pirates now. Pirates have only led for six minutes in this ball game, but still have a chance to pull out the victory. Well, their defensive pressure here late in the game has been outstanding. Here's a little clear out. A little bump from behind. And trapped along that baseline. Now they need to get across midcourt in time. And they'll turn it over. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. As that shot would not fall for Lockhart. Again, more than five minutes without any points for Wichita State. Oh, for the last 
six from the floor. Well, I'm going to credit ECU's defense. They have really upped their tempo and pressure on the guards, which has called them to be flustered. Not be, we, I don't think Bassard's even touched the ball in the last five minutes, has she? You see Williams is coming back out. Do we have a Bassard touch category? We, we could dedicate a camera to Ranji just bound for the whole game. She has filled up a box score, night in, night out. Straight away, Sanders. Oh. Pirates hoping they can start to pull away here. A 14-0 run now over the last five minutes. Shut the front door. Wow. I mean, just stepping out and stroking it. Look at that. Boom. They'd like to slam that door shut and put an end to this run by the Shockers over the past couple of weeks. That's pretty unbelievable. That's, that's a big time comeback right there. Wichita State just turning up their gears, another, another one or two. They had it in third gear all the game and brought it back to fifth gear and smoked them. So all of a sudden it's Keitha Adams and her Shockers instead of the burden of how do we hang on to a lead and take it to the finish line. Now they need the comeback. Trailing by seven. There's plenty of time. They can do it. They just need to get Lassard oh. to touch. Well, it's a two-way tie for second between the two schools over there in the Sunshine State. Coach Abe's Knights of UCF have slowly climbed the ladder in their own right. Right behind them, the three-way tie for fourth. The Cougars, the Bearcats, and these Shockers but it's the Pirates who are trying to close that gap if they can get the home victory here today. I mean, it doesn't put Wichita down any further than what they are. They'll go, if, if they lose, they would be fit five and four. And, uh, you know, they still have one game lead, uh, lead up in the upper half, but obviously they don't want to do that. I still think, you know, they have, they have a chance here. They just, they have to get the ball to the right people and maybe make a couple stops here of their own. And, and they haven't made any stops here lately. They credit that backcourt with Monk and Frazier. They're looking pretty strong together. Monk's back in. Uh, Josh Graham informing us that she did have a cut when she went down that last time that they had to tend to. They'll have it all cleaned up. Oh, a great feed. Just couldn't handle it. Green going to the basket. And they'll come away with another rebound. They might have gotten away with one right there. Can't go up and down with the ball, but oh well. Well, the longer they hold it, the longer the Shockers go without it. And the Shockers break down defensively after all that. Uh, gimme for Alex Frazier, the only player who was even on this Pirates team a couple years ago. And all of a sudden, it's ECU going from down 16 to up 9. And Bassard is determined to keep things going for the go-get-it gal and these Shockers. There are a couple shots that Wichita took when they were up by about 10 or 12 that were not good shots. And that's what happens if you, if you don't manage those shots now. And then they gave them a little air, gave them a little breathing room, and they made a run. The Bassard basket snapped a drought in excess of six minutes. No free throws, no field goals. And all it does is really answer the easy layup from Alex Frazier a moment ago. Bassard with 21 points, your current game high. But four different Pirates now in double figures. Oliveira with eight is flirting with that mark as well. Salida Green with a double-double. Ten rebounds on the night. Lazada Cabbage, a double-double of her own. 12 and 10 for the Shockers. Uh, you saw Bassard got the bucket. Whatever lid was on that basket, they know it's gone now. Well, they need to make a couple stops because Wichita State is not a great three-point shooting team. That's not what they do, so... And they need a steal here. Pirates up by seven. Bassard gets it back. Bassard pass Monk. Just a little high off the window. And it stays with the Shockers. Pirates just can't get this ball back. Finally, Sanders has it. And they're going to call it. Pardon me, they're going to commit the foul to stop the clock. And the Shockers, that shot from Bassard now makes them, I think, one of their last 11. 
Well, Tompkins threw it up there and almost almost made it, hit the front of the rim trying to pass it to her teammate. Just almost better to take that three-point shot and try to hit it. But uh, great comeback here so far by ECU on their home floor in a big game situation. Is it a must win? No, but I mean, it's a must win if you want to get seated properly in the tournament. Sanders doesn't miss many free throws. That was her first attempt of the night. ECU 15 of 21 from the charity stripe this evening. They've taken 10 more, make it 11 more free throws than Wichita State has. She's used to shooting her free throw about <laughs> right there at the top of the key. She needs to move her free throws back a little bit. The lead is nine for the Pirates inside a minute to go. Looking for the win here at home. I would say this full court pressure that they put on them pretty much the whole second half has taken them out of rhythm. The last home win 10 days ago against Houston and over time by two. And now Lazada Cabbage will try to add to her double-double. Sitting on 12 points, 10 rebounds. I know it's a tough loss for Wichita here, uh, but I will still congratulate them for all their presence and everything they're doing. I mean, the fact that they put themselves in a position to win here, and they they have beaten a lot of great teams like US, USF. Um, it's a team that I wouldn't want to play in the tournament. By getting as many days off in the tournament as you can, such an advantage going up to Connecticut in March. And Lazada Cabbage comes through with both. To make it interesting, a seven point lead for the Pirates. They can't get the steals, so they'll commit the foul. And now it's gonna be Oliveira going the other way to the line where she's four for four today. ECU looking to be winners three of their last four here in conference. And four of their last six. They have SMU coming to town this weekend before a trip to USF. And of course, we will see if Wichita State loses today, whether or not they can bounce back against a much improved Houston Cougars squad. In fact, a Cougars team that beat the Shockers earlier this year. Well, it's good to see Sa Saunders have the kind of game she did. I mean, she was the clutch as far as hitting those two threes that pretty much buried them, uh, that last three she took. Obviously, Monk, you know, has got to be the, the player of the game where she, she just really did it all for him. She was steady and an amazing score with great percentage tonight. Oliveira looking to become the next starter to reach double figure she does with her 10th point. So five players in double figures scoring today for the Pirates, led by Monks 19, the freshman with a phenomenal outing. Big part of that comeback here in the second half. And ECU with the free throws back to a nine point lead. So little time has come off the clock though in the past couple of possessions. Well, ECU's last game that they had, they had their first Five players in double figure scoring game, I think of the year, wasn't it? Of the year. Now they've done it again. So that something must be happening. And some of them had a late wake up call, but they got there and uh, they look good together. Well, this makes it a lot more enjoyable to go back to classes the next day. And practice. You know, I, I think probably who was favored, I think I'd have to say Wichita State was favored coming in. Um, but you just never know which e e um, ECU team you're going to meet. And they take on lots of different personalities and lots of different people are stepping up, like you, you said earlier in the broadcast, Lincoln. And we will see how they bounce back against the Cougars, a team they have seen already once this year. And whether the Pirates can continue to build on this. Not a lot of time. It'll be Bassard pulling the trigger on the three. And Wichita State still only the one three-pointer all night, and that was at the buzzer to end the first half. Wichita State one of nine from beyond the arc. Only made one of the last ten field goals overall, and that has hurt the comeback effort. 
Oliveira is going to go back to the line where she's six for six. Well, Wichita State, like three or four possessions in the third quarter, went and went into that high-low game against that zone. Heather Mason called the timeout, talked to her kids kind of about the pride and everything, and that's when we saw a change in the whole complexion of what happened, and, and the whole game changed. Eleven for Oliveira. Go with four rebounds and four assists today. The body language on East Carolina bench has changed a lot too because earlier that was not a very fun bench to look at and it seems to be super happy now. Well, big thanks to everybody on our American Digital Network crew tonight in Greenville. As Bassard, 21 points today. Her foot on the line, it would be a long two. We'll note that a moment ago, Lazada Cabbage did foul out with her fifth. And this is going to go back over the Shockers, 13.9 to go. But the Shockers will be picking up their first loss in conference play since they fell in Orlando on January 6th. They beat Memphis twice, Tulane, SMU, and USF. We'll see them again, Houston, on Saturday here on the American Digital Network. I think when they go back and look at this game, um, Coach Adams is going to think that this is one that slipped away. I'm not going to say you can't credit ECU because I'm giving all them the credit for coming back, but this was a game they didn't manage in the fourth quarter, uh, and they didn't, they, they just kind of stayed steady, and, and when they picked up the tempo, ECU did, they didn't match it. They didn't go get it. I got it. <laughs> As taking a seat, Alex Frazier. Stay tuned upon the conclusion of the game. When we come back, Josh Graham will have a chance to catch up with Heather Macy and one of the top Pirates from tonight. I have a feeling we might know who that would be. Monk will dribble it out. A 10-point lead, a 26-point turnaround for ECU as time expires. ECU continues to climb in the American standings, now four and five in conference. Winners four of the last six, three of their last four. And the Pirates at home did not look like they were going to be able to keep up the good times. But boy, what a comeback in the second half as they will ride this momentum into the weekend. We step aside here on ADN. We'll be back to Greenville with post-game thoughts in a moment. Wichita State University is Shocker Nation. We exceed expectations, push boundaries, seize opportunities, and move boldly ahead. We are student-centered and innovation-driven. It's who we are. Our vision is simple but powerful. Create, innovate, collaborate, and celebrate with one unifying purpose, to shock the world. When learning creates leaders, ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. 
ECU outscores the Shockers 30 to 9 in that fourth quarter, and that is why our Josh Graham is joined by Heather Macy, head coach of the Pirates. When the game was 47 to 33, coach. What did you tell your team that led to this comeback? Listen, it's nothing I told them. It's, it's the players are leading one another, and they play for one another. And uh, what a what a great win against a very very good Wichita State program. You told me earlier today that you were going to rely on your younger players to make big time decisions down the stretch. What did you see from your freshman Lashonda Monk? Well, she was incredible tonight and gave us energy when we got down big. But listen, Michaela Sanders is the one who hit those threes that kind of opened the game up and. You know, that's a fifth fifth year senior uh, showing up in really experienced moments. So very proud of incredible team win. Very proud of this group. Three straight wins at home. Where do you find comfort in playing in this building? You know, I don't know. I mean, we've won a whole bunch of games here. Our crowd support is unbelievable. We appreciate everybody in Greenville and the way they support us. Coach, how do you use this game as a springboard for you guys down the stretch? Listen, Josh, we just keep working and we're, you know, we're taking these seven freshmen and sophomores and getting them to play really, really hard and just thankful that the results are what they are. Congratulations, Coach. Enjoy this one. Thanks. Go Pirates. That is the head coach of the Pirates, Heather Macy. Now we welcome in the freshman who had a career night, LaShonda Monk. LaShonda, where did this team find belief when it was a 14-point deficit? Uh, I think we just had to come together. You know, we had to do what we normally do, what we worked on. We were prepared for the game, so we just had to find it deep inside and bring it out and play hard. What does this win mean to you, considering it's the third straight win you guys have had at home? Uh, it means a lot, you know, um, being a freshman and being able to help out um, the upperclassmen and everybody else on the team, help out Coach Macy, means a lot, you know, play in front of the crowd. We, we've heard from Coach Macy how close this group is and how they've come together as the season gone on. You guys are, there's a bunch of younger players on this team. How much are things starting to click for you guys at the right time? Um, I think things are starting to click for us actually at the right time. You know, um, we are pretty close, like off the court. So we just try to translate that on the court, you know, and get everybody hyped up. Congratulations, LaShonda, on the win. Thanks for the visit. Thank you. That's ECU freshman LaShonda Monk. You guys, thanks. Thank you, Josh. Again, you heard Heather Macy talk about Michaela Sanders. She was perfect, three for three from beyond the arc. And of course, LaShawn Monk, her second career start, a big one, a career night. 19.7 assists for Monk in the comeback victory. ECU trailed by as many as 16, wins by double figures when it's all said and done. Pirates will stay at home, face SMU this weekend. The American Digital Network will be traveling, though, to Wichita as the Cougars and Shockers collide. For Angela Beck, I'm Lincoln Rose. We'll see you in Kansas.